Welcome to OutDrive, folks. I'm your host, Cliff Callis, and each week I'm bringing you actionable marketing insights you can apply to reach, connect with, and convert rural American consumers. OutDrive is powered by Callis, a full-service advertising agency with a focus on marketing rural America. Callis offers a wide range of integrated marketing services, including website development, search engine marketing, social media, video, and digital. We develop strategic and creative campaigns to build your brand and your business. And you can learn more about us at ecalis.com. Now join me in the front seat as we head out on the road to success. Let's go. Hey folks, welcome to OutDrive. We've got another great story to share with you today about life and work in rural America. Our guest today comes from a family-run business right here in central Missouri. Michael Hemme is one of the brothers behind Hemme Brothers Farmstead Creamery, who specialize in making delicious, small-batch, handcrafted cheeses like quark, curds, cheddar, aged cheddar, and most recently, mozzarella. The creamery was founded in 2016, but the family's farming roots go back over 25 years, initially raising pigs before transitioning to the dairy business. Because of their lifelong experience raising crops and livestock, Hemi Brothers opted for a vertically integrated business model, which means they control the process from crop to cream to curd. If you live in Missouri, you may have seen these products in specialty stores, farmers markets, wineries, and maybe even a few high V's. This family has a great story, and I'm excited to share it with our OutDrive listeners today. Welcome to OutDrive, Michael. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to uh, learning more about what you guys are doing, but let's start with a little bit about you. Tell me about your background. So I grew up on a farm, a dairy farm. It started out as a hog farm operation, my mom and dad did. And then in 94, they started looking into dairy. They built a milk barn from scratch and dad started looking into a grazing operation. And we kind of went down that road of dairy. As things went on, we started looking, dad started looking into doing more with the dairy instead of the hog operation. The hogs, if you ask anybody that was in the hog, industry in the 90s it was pretty rough dad lost a whole lot of money in the 90s doing hogs and so we started looking more towards dairy in 2007 or 8 my brother john and nathan my older brothers they came into the operation and formed a partnership with my mom and dad and we started milking a few more cows then and in 2012 i graduated from college the ozarks in branson missouri and i uh, joined the farm then and then in 2016, my younger brother, Aaron, he joined the operation. And so that's kind of where we've been. We started our creamery in 2016 and have done that for the last six years. So what was it like growing up on a family farm? <laughs> it was different. It was a lot. I shouldn't say it was a lot tougher because I don't want to say what everybody else's situations were. But like I said, dad lost a lot of money in the doing hogs in the 90s. So I I mean, I'll just be honest. I'll say we grew up poor. <laughs> we didn't have as much as some other people did. Sometimes I felt bad. We, we, I could tell some of my friends at school would laugh at our vehicles because we didn't have as nice of vehicles as some other people. And so it was a little, I guess I was slightly embarrassed, but we grew up having to work hard and help dad on the farm. And maybe some of the jobs we got asked to do were grown men jobs. And it was maybe more than what it should have been asked for. But I think it molded us into who we are today, and I wouldn't have it any other way the way we grew up. Not that I say I would want that for my kids because it was a pretty tough upbringing for that, but I fondly look back at it. So, A lot yeah. of good life lessons can come out of challenging situations. <laughs> yeah, we were definitely uh, scrapping for everything we had. So Makes you appreciate it when you have it. It's for that is for sure. You, you never... Like I said, I'm glad to have had those experiences, but I'd never want to go back. So, <laughs> so you went to uh, you went to college, school the Ozarks. What'd you study? I studied uh, animal science and agricultural business. I did a double major there. Yep. So, so was it always kind of a foregone conclusion that you were going to come home and and stay on the farm? I went through phases as a kid. Probably when I was a little kid, I, I just wanted to farm, and then I got. A little bit older and I guess going through some of those tough times. I remember I went through a stage there when I was like middle grade school age that I was like, I don't know about this mom and dad. I see with the stuff they have to go through and I don't know about this. And then 
as I got a little older into high school and started maturing a little more, I guess I started looking at it and thinking, you know, I really enjoyed that. And I don't know, seeing the family legacy definitely wanted to be a part of that. Um, I mean, I thought I considered going and being a teacher and maybe trying to play uh, college football in college, but it would be a small school and everything. And part of me just realized that, you know, I really love football, but it's time to grow up and look at what I really want to do after high school. And that's, I knew when I knew I went to farm. So. So you, as I understand it, are, you, you work with your herd. Mm -hmm. And I, and I guess that you guys have different responsibilities, maybe based on your interests or your education or just because that's what you need to do. Tell us about mm -hmm. how that's broken down between you and your brothers. So my dad, start with him. He does the, uh, selling of the cheese um before the creamery he obviously did a lot of farm labor but now he primarily focuses on marketing and selling our cheese my oldest brother john he does the heifer raising and the uh, row crop side of our operation and then my old brother nathan he does the cheese making and some of those things that go with that and then i do herd health stuff and with the cow with the dairy cow herd and reproduction stuff. And my younger brother, Aaron, he does nutrition with the dairy herd and helps me with a lot of the stuff. And we do a lot of the same tasks together with that. And then Aaron also does, we have a beef herd as well. And Aaron manages that as well. And that's just kind of how it's broken out. My dad in particular, he does the sales because he's really good at talking. So <laughs> that's kind of uh, his forte, but uh, I think everybody's kind of in the area that they want to be and never the area that they're, they are good at managing. Um, I think it works out quite well for us. Sounds like you guys make a great team. So I think it's really cool as I think about your operation to think that you grow your own crops, raise your own cattle, milk process and market your products. So you're what in marketing, we call it vertically integrated from top to mm -hmm. bottom. Um, yeah. Why did you choose to take that approach? So, I mean, some of it just kind of happened naturally, I guess. So like in 2010, we were able to take over my grandpa, his uh, acres to farm with row crop. Before that, we just had enough acres to just grow feed for our cows. And then we really didn't have enough to even do that. So then we got the row crop acres that he owns. We were able to expand that and do more with that. And then we did that with the cows, but we were just looking, basically the way we, we started looking towards this was the milk price. Commodity markets are very volatile. Dairy is very volatile. It's hard to know what's going to happen with the markets. And you, so basically you're a price taker. So when I went to graduate from college, we knew I was coming back to the operation. Well, we knew we needed to make more money somehow. So we didn't know if that was milking more cows or doing something with the milk and the cows we currently had. We went towards this route because we knew there was more, more risk, but there would be more reward with it. And I guess we're maybe we're more risk takers. I don't know, but we decided, well, let's do this. Cause if we can make this work, we can control our price. So we went down that path with the creamery. And so, yes, I mean, we are very much so from, it all starts with the soil and growing crops and we grow our cattle and we feed our cattle, our milking herd, and we're able to control all of that. And then we take that milk and process it in the cheese and we're able to control our price, our final product going to the consumer directly to the consumer. We're able to control that price and keep it, keep the control somewhat in our hands as long as we can sell cheese. <laughs> right. So, and how are cheese sales going? They're going well. We've seen growth. Every year that we've been in business, we're able to make money off that cheese and we reinvest it into the business and continue to grow that. We're in the process right now of expanding our creamery operation, the building there to be able to have more storage and be able to expand and grow into more cheese production in the future. And so that works well for us. And it's where we don't have any regrets going into the business. We decided to go down that route. It works well for our operation anyway. Good. So. And yeah. and your only cheese, correct? In terms of what you sell to the consumer? Yes. Yep. We do cheese. We there may be a day we go down different enterprises, but we currently just look towards doing cheese right now. We 
we named our operation Henry Brothers Creamery because we led that left that name open for you know we may do ice cream in the future or whatever. But for now, we are just we're focused on doing cheeses and different types of cheeses. So, so what's your best selling product? Our best seller would be our um, aged cheddar. We call it Brothers Keeper. Hands down, our best seller. It's it's ideal to have it aged around a year, and it does does really well. It's it's sharp, and I think it's really good anyway. <laughs> and apparently, so do our consumers. So it's yeah, it's our flagship cheddar, and does really well for us. So. What is it that makes uh, cheese challenging to produce? I would say whenever we got into this business, our, we, hit, we hired a consultant, and he does a really good job with us. We use him when we're looking into doing a feta cheese um, this coming spring and everything. We're going to use him to help us get started with that. But whenever we met with him for the first time in, I think, 2010, he told us, he said, I can teach, you know, anyone to make cheese he's like the hard part is selling cheese he said you know i can i can teach anybody that can wants to learn and do this stuff but the hard part is getting it sold and so i think for that you know we took that to heart and my dad does really well nathan does a fantastic job making cheese makes a really good product and then my dad does a really good job marketing the cheese and selling it my brother nathan does selling too they go to the farmer's markets every saturday and do a good job marketing it to them as well so So talk a little bit about uh, all the different ways that you sell or distribute your products. So you you mentioned farmer's market Mm -hmm. and I know you can buy it online, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. How else can the consumer buy your cheese? So we're in a lot of stores along the I-70 corridor, basically from St. Louis to Kansas City. Like in the St. Louis area, we're in quite a bit of Schnucks and Deerbergs there. We use distributors. When in that Kansas City area, there's a distributor we use. There's a distributor up in Kansas City area. Uh, I think there's four major ones that we work with. And if you're on Long I-70, there's the Cheese Store in Sweet Springs. They, they're they a good retailer. They're a great real t- retailer. They do a fantastic job selling our cheese there. But also, I mean, like I said, uh, the biggest thing for us, one thing when we got into this, we didn't understand how important it would be, but it was the farmer's markets. We love doing that because we get to meet consumers, build our brand through meeting people, letting them see who we are and talking with them. And they love visiting with us and, and seeing our story and buying it from us directly there. And we love that too, because we get to uh, take those retail dollars at the market and we get to capture the 100% of the pie there. That works great. But but yeah, like you said, too, we also have a shop button on our uh, website and people can order through it there and works good, too. So if somebody were listening to the podcast right now, what would be the web address that they would go to to buy your cheese and to read about they, your operation? Yeah. Oh, they would go to uh, www.hemibrotherscreamery.com is our website. And yep, they can go there. We have a shop button. And they can go there and order our products through there and we ship across the U.S. Um, in the summertime, we'll shut down. We're a little, I guess, afraid to ship dairy products in the summertime like that. But the cooler times of year, that's what we do. And that works pretty good, too. So so you'd said that your dad takes care of the sales and marketing for Hemi Brothers. Uh, in addition to farmers markets and selling them to supermarkets and direct to the consumer, you have a website. What are some other ways that you market your product? How else do you tell the Hemi Brothers story to people? We're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we do do some social media there um, and try to share our story on there. And that works pretty well for us. But like I said, the big thing I think is really getting out there and, and um, you know, we put a lot of time in at the farmer's markets. Um, my, like I said, my dad, he does a good job and he goes and my brother, Nathan, and we have some employees that work for us, Bobby, Abby, Tony, they go and, and do a lot of that. I've been once <laughs> just to see what it was kind of like. It's pretty, it's, it's very interesting. A lot of people really are into that thing. And, and that's really, I think is the big thing is building your brand there and people seeing that and then they meet their friends and their friend tells them, you know, like, Hey, you got to try this cheese. It's this dairy in sweet Springs, Missouri, and it's great. And then they become one of your customers. They think that's awesome. You know? And, and I think that's, that's a big way to build your brand is meeting people in those avenues. Oh, I agree. 
And the farmers markets are, they're big and they're growing and they're not necessarily mm -hmm. big in size, but they're important to folks like mm -hmm. you, other small, I'll call them mom and pop, but that I, I say that in a positive way, mom and pop operations mm -hmm. that, you know, they don't have a ton of dollars for advertising, mm -hmm. but they have a great product and a great story. And so the farmer's market really brings producers and connectors together at a place where you can get to know each other. And, you know, there's a real trend in food today. People want to know where it comes from. It used to be, where'd your food come from? Well, it came from the supermarket down the store. Well, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it comes from the farmer up the road or the cheese producer in Sweet Springs. Right. Well, I think that's a big thing. Maybe that COVID kind of, showed a lot of people and it built it even more is that people realize, you know, like, Hey, there's no meat on the shelves and all this people are freaking out. Well, where am I getting my meat from? Well, then people looked into these things and went to find their meat somewhere else and went and found it from a farmer who does direct marketing. I mean, I've, I have some friends that do that too. And I mean, there's, there's people out there that, that are there to sell that and do that for people. They just, people have to look for it. But I think there are definitely more and more people that are, doing that more these days and headed that direction. I agree. I agree. And I, I, I'm excited about that. I love fresh food. You know, we buy our cattle from my cousin who has his stock and, you know, we support the farmer's markets because we like the freshness. Mm -hmm. We like others like to know where the food's coming from. We like to get to know the people who uh, market there. And, you know, ultimately just like in this podcast, we want to help them tell their stories. Mm-hmm. And, you know, word of mouth is so powerful that, you know, nothing, nothing can really replace that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you can go to Wendy's or something and order a BLT or something or another or when they're baking, whatever, they're some with a tomato on it. And you see the pink colored tomato and you go to the farmer's market and buy a tomato there and you get it and it's bright red. And tell me that those are not, you know, the pink one is a, technically a tomato, but there's just no comparison. I mean, in the, the food and, you know, that food is more nutrient dense and better for you. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see. I and mean, one thing maybe I didn't, before we started doing this, maybe I didn't see as much until we started going down this path, you know, so, it's just better. It's just yeah, better. It is. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your role. Why don't you talk about a typical day in your life? You were probably up early this morning, I'm guessing. Well, yeah. Uh, so People ask me that sometimes and I say, well, what time of year is it? Because <laughs> it varies. Like today, yeah, I milk, got up and milk cows this morning, got up at 4 a.m. That's when my typical day starts. Um, sometimes I milk in an evening and I get done at 7 o'clock at night. Some days I'm done at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It just depends on the time of year. Sometimes we're doing corn silage. I'm working till 9 o'clock at night or during grain harvest. I work till 9 o'clock at night. It just It depends on the time of year. During the growing season, we're putting in crops, putting up hay. We're doing a lot of that stuff. During harvest, we're harvesting um, our grain and whatever. And so it just typical days vary. If they're on the days that we're not doing field work, I'm doing a lot of maintenance things on the farm. There's stuff that I kind of put off, I guess. Um, so I also, one of my responsibilities on the farm is balancing the, the checkbook and, and managing the financials on the farm and so I do that as well. But yeah, it just, every day is a different day, pretty much. So it's just good. It keeps it um, fresh and different. Absolutely. So. so when you're out in the field, is it like all hands on deck? So on the farm side, like I said earlier, me, John, and Aaron, we do a lot of the farm, farm work on that stuff. So we will co collaborate and we'll all, like, so John's in charge of row crop side of the operation. And we will help him out. This fall, John was combining. Then I was hauling the majority of the grain and Aaron was planting cover crops behind the combine pretty much and uh, doing that. So that works pretty well. We each have our own areas, but then we help each other out when we need help. Like this morning with our beef cattle, we vaccinated our calves and the cows. And I saw so that Aaron is in charge of that. And I helped him with that this morning. So yeah, we it works pretty well together doing that. Yeah. So, sounds like it. Very complimentary of each other. What do you feed your herd that's maybe different than others? We feed what would be different than others. We feed a lot of the same things that people feed, a lot of corn silage, sore cows. 
we do a lot of grazing with our young stock and our dry cows, but the milk cows, they get fed a total mixed ration at the barn. And the one thing we feed that's probably different than a lot of dairy farmers would be maybe we do more cover crops. We're big into that sort of stuff, doing a lot of cover crops after our grains harvest and whatnot. And we feed, uh, like this year, we're feeding pearl millet, which is something that's grown a lot out in Kansas, but not really around here. We feed triticale and clover and cow peas, stuff like that. A lot of, we're, we've been experimenting a lot with cover crops here the last several years. So that's something different we've been doing. And this is all customized just for your operation. Yes, we work and John works, talks to this. He has a consultant he's been dealing with and we and then they come up with a cover crop mix that we think would work well, um, a blend of different species that'll work well to be a good mix for a ration for our cows. And with that, so yeah, we've really gotten pretty, we're pretty excited about doing a lot of those things. We do a lot of, like I said, we get into the, a lot of the cover crops and doing different stuff like that and something we've been getting into here lately. Sounds good. So let me throw yeah. you my curveball question. Okay. This sure. is my this is my Wainwright question. Okay. <laughs> Just because he has such a great curveball. Well, <laughs> I'm a Royals fan. So. Oh my gosh, that's okay too. <laughs> I love the Royals as well. Yeah. So if I had to say or ask you what makes Hemi Brothers cheese different, how would you answer that? What would make Hemi Brothers cheese different, I would say, would be our story. Like I said, I think we do a fantastic job with our cheese, and our milk makes our cheese unique as well. But I would say what makes it unique is our story. I mean, that we are four brothers working together on a farm. You don't really hear that a whole lot. And if you do hear that, it's at some mega, huge, monstrous farm and whatever. Well, that's not us. We're four brothers on a small dairy in Missouri. And with my parents, too, we got five families and our family working there as well, well as two full-time employees and uh, several part-time high school help. I think that's what makes our us unique is our story. And to me, that's pretty, pretty awesome. It is. It's a very awesome story. And no, you don't hear that very often. Right. The focus of our podcast is marketing to rural America. And really what we're trying to do is help people better understand what rural America is all about. And understand the people of rural America and how they are. Mm -hmm. You grew up out here in the country, mm -hmm. went away to college, chose to come back. When I say the words rural America, what kind of words and images come to your mind? I think of open spaces. <laughs> I think of, I don't know, beautiful sunsets, beautiful sunrises out in the country. To me, there's nothing better. I know People want to live in a city and that's fine. They can live there and they can have it because I don't, I really love the open areas and the space and just, I don't know, getting to look at God's creation to me standing there and looking at something the man made in a big skyscraper doesn't really excite me. I mean, I think it's impressive to see it. Don't get me wrong, but I love the country. And when I think of rural America, I think of a bunch of hardworking blue collar people and that, you know, or love their country and, and, love their God. And I, I don't know. I, I love it. I love everything about a small town. Sure. There's things about small towns that drive you crazy sometimes a little bit, but there's always going to be that sort of sort of stuff, but uh, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And you know, people call it flyover States or whatever. And I, whatever, you know, they can stay in the city and now, you know, don't let them, don't tell them about our area. They don't, we don't want to move them out here. You know, it's more for us, I guess. So, <laughs> I, you know, it's, I love it. And so I wouldn't have it any other way. I think that's a great way to say that. So uh, with your operation, can somebody come right to you, right to your operation and buy your products? We don't have a retail store. We usually direct them to the cheese store in Sweet Springs, which is just five miles away from us. Um, and actually, when you talk about marketing earlier, we do have um, some billboards on a 70 that we do in collaboration with them um, and point them towards that cheese store. That works great for them. Um, and it works great for us. So it, it's that's where we usually point people towards. We don't really, like I said, we don't have a retail store. We are looking in the future. My brother has a farm along I-70 there, and we are looking towards the future of uh, possibly building a retail store there ourselves. 
And that way people could pull off I-70 and come and directly buy uh, our products from us. Um, so that's the only thing we're looking towards. But currently, we'd like to point them towards uh, the Chief Store in Sweet Springs. Yeah. So we're talking about possibility of adding a retail store in the future. What what else are in the future plans for the Hemi Brothers? Well, I said earlier we were looking to add another cheese, feta cheese. We're looking to just keep growing that. Another a pepper jack cheese, I think Nathan said he's looking into maybe doing. But right now we currently have our, our 10 cheese curds, seven cheddars, and uh, we're doing that. And there's... <sighs> That's just one thing we're looking towards, I guess, is more direct marketing to consumers. We may look into doing more beef to consumers and stuff like that since now we have a beef herd. There's different things we can look towards doing that. The more we can do, the more we can direct market to a consumer and capture those retail dollars, the better off we'll be. Yeah, sounds like good plans. Good plans. Well, yeah. what uh, in addition to buying your products... Are there any other ways that people can support local farms uh, or producers or family businesses that you can think of? I would say the main thing you can do to support them is, well, have their back. There's a lot of misconceptions about farmers out there. And I think you can do good to tell the story of farmers that you know and that you purchase products from. But the main thing would be doing that and be an advocate for agriculture. There's a lot of people that do that now. And and that's I think that's a good thing. You see a lot of people on social media, um, advocating for agriculture and this thing. One thing that agriculture hasn't done a good job of in the past, they kind of took their tail and run. But now a lot of people are being proactive and, and doing those things. And that's really good. But another thing they can do is just um, purchase from a farmer directly if you can. Like I said, I have some buddies that that do that. They sell beef direct to market to, to consumers and, um, you know, support your farmer, your local farmer that's out there if you can. Amen. Amen. Well, Michael, I've really enjoyed visiting with you today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience that you think they might find uh, interesting or maybe inspiring? I would just say one thing about our farm that's made us successful, I would say, is is having a bunch of different partners in our group. We have five different managing partners and are five different personalities and strengths and weaknesses. And I think that's what makes our business very successful is that we have my dad, for instance, he is, he's always thinking big. He's the dreamer of the group and he dreams about big things. Well, he, that's great because I don't think as creatively as he does. And he comes up with this great big idea, but sometimes his great big ideas need to be pulled back down to earth a little bit. Well, then I can come in there and kind of say, Hey dad, you know, I found three reasons why this isn't, we should maybe relook at this, you know, but so it just works great for our operation to have um, several different guys with different perspectives and different ideas that we can bounce off each other and doing that with those five guys and being a team like that, we can come out with hopefully the best outcome of that situation. So I wish you all the best as you continue to develop your, your business and appreciate your interest in, in being on our podcast, Michael. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome folks. Thanks for listening to OutDrive. I hope you've enjoyed our visit today with Michael Hemme, one of the brothers behind Hemme Brothers Farmstead Creamery. Come back again next week, and I'll take you down the roads of rural America, where it's heaven on earth. Thanks for taking a ride with us on OutDrive. This episode is complete, so head on over to eCallus.com for show notes and more insight you can apply to help drive your business growth. And be sure to sign up for our free monthly e-letter, OutThink, for even more helpful content about marketing to rural America. Have a great day and keep on driving.